Okay, I understand this is a difficult moment for you, but we have power failures throughout the ship, and I want you... I don't work for you, and I don't work for Anderson Dawes. I gave the order to fire. You know we had to do it. If we hadn't, the Inners would if have... If you've killed them... Hate me later. Work now. As we get closer to the end of the year, we're taking a look at the most fearless women on TV from deep space battles to the living dead and beyond. These characters stood out for being inspiring and brave in the face of challenges. So we're shedding light on these incredible women and shows as we count down the most fearless women on TV. Starting with number 10, Women of the Walking Dead. Who can slice through mobile meat sacks with the greatest of ease? These women. Who watches friends and family die but still returns to the fight? These warriors. And who fights zombie hordes week after week seemingly without breaking a sweat? The Women of the Walking Dead. Maggie, Michonne, and Carol are just three characters who have proven their zombie whacking prowess on the AMC horror series over its 10 season run. It must feel good to be so badass. We need the food. I was hoping you might send enough to tide them over while we figure this out. We could do it. We have the surpluses. Yeah, but for how long? Till we get that fuel? That tractor's not moving which means the big fields don't get plowed and the yield comes in short. What about the plow we brought back from the museum? I need a blacksmith to fix it, and I don't have one right now. How long is Earl going to be locked up? I don't know. I haven't decided. First time we've had to deal with something like this. It might be time, then, to start talking about making some rules. Do you think he'd ever do something like this again? I didn't think that he'd do it the first time. Well, you didn't hang him like you did Gregory. There must be a reason for that. So should I let him walk like nothing happened? No. I hate what he did to you. To Enid. But if keeping him locked up means that the crops don't get planted, then it's not just him that gets uh, Hilltop will be fine. Until that ethanol shows up, we're holding on to our surpluses because we're going to need him. Number nine, Olivia Benson, Law and Order, SVU. In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. In New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Special Victims Unit, led by a fierce woman who is single-mindedly focused on bringing perpetrators to justice. Olivia Benson is so inspirational that her crusade for victims has spilled over into Mariska Hargitay's real life. The actress is a leading activist dedicated to ending the rape kit backlog and has helped fight for sexual assault survivors with her Joyful Heart Foundation. Now 15 years into its mission to change society's response to sexual assault, domestic violence, and child abuse. You're doing great, guys. It's okay, nice and easy. Get back! Move! Get back! Now! Farther back! Wait for the green light. These kids are going in the back of the car. You know, Joe, Joe, we don't really, we don't really need the kids anymore, right? You keep your gun on me. Why don't we let the kids go and just make it about you and me, Joe? I'm all you need. You and me. Go. Go. He's letting both kids go. Okay, that's great, Joe. Come on. Thank you, Joe. All right, come on. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Get in. Okay, I'm getting in. I'm just going to let Tucker know the plan, okay? No, I'm going to tell Tucker. Take him out. She carries weapon. I got it. You all right? Number eight, Issa Insecure. As a Los Angeles 30-something navigating personal and professional relationships, alongside her best friends, Ray portrays an everyday kind of fearlessness. The kind required to confront your own decisions, good and bad, and move forward with them. And maybe dance a little in the mirror while you're at it. I saw Lawrence and his new girlfriend the other day. What? What'd you do? I said hello, uh, got my 
to go and kept it pushing. He looked really happy. So, you good? Because that would have activated me on Petty. <laughs> I mean, I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me a little bit. We were together for five years. Yeah, you ain't been broken up that long. I know. But the person he is now is not the person he was with me. What do you mean? Like, they were out to lunch, and I'm pretty sure he was gonna pay. <laughs> I never got that. That's true, gonna be paying. <laughs> yes. I don't know, I got that deal with potential. You know, I got the work in progress, and it took a lot of support and patience, and I just, I feel like she's reaping all the benefits of his time with me. Damn. Let me shut up, because I know I don't have a right to feel like that. Nah, you have a right to feel however you want to feel. Seriously. Number seven, The Doctor, Doctor Who, season 11. The story of Doctor Who, a time-traveling extraterrestrial life form who acts as a sort of space time cop battling intergalactic and alternate universe threats and occasionally regenerating, took what is arguably its most profound turn yet with its 13th Doctor. For the first time since the iconic British sci-fi series began airing in 1963, the Doctor regenerated as a woman. Whitaker took on more than just a staple of British pop culture when she agreed to play the role, but also its rabid fan base. So hats off to the Doctor and her new adventures, as well as a brave woman who accepted the gig. So everything we saw, everything we've lied to people about, is this normal for you? I'm just a traveler. Sometimes I see things need fixing. I do what I can. Except right now, I'm a traveler without a ship. I've stayed too long. I should get back to finding my TARDIS. Doctor, can I just say, you really need to get out of those clothes. <laughs> right, yeah. It's been a long time since I bought women's clothes. Captain Giorgio and Michael Burnham, Star Trek Discovery. Since its start in the 1960s, the Star Trek franchise has grown both in size and in socio-political philosophy. Now, part of that growth hit streaming service CBS All Access in 2018 with season one of Star Trek Discovery, which focuses on the struggles of a female crew member of its starship with male captains playing a supporting role to her main storyline. Martin Green's Burnham is the thread connecting an otherwise ensemble cast that features Yo as both earnest, upstanding Captain Giorgio and her indomitable alt-universe counterpart, Emperor Giorgio. Your life will be long, Gabriel, and every single moment of it will be spent in our agonizers. A fair price to pay for your vaulting ambition. Take him to Brig C, only the finest for our new guest. Let's go. You could have died hunting that traitor across the universe. I am so happy you didn't. Let her rest a bit and have her at my residence by dinner. Yes, Emperor. There is so much to discuss. Everything will be the way it was. Dear daughter. Number five, Courtney Whitmore, DC's Stargirl. 
Whether moving to a new town in Nebraska, learning how to fly, or convincing people that being better is worthwhile, Courtney's courage is wrapped up in a surprisingly sunny optimism for a teenager who supposedly grew up in Southern California. Nevertheless, it makes her a compelling lead as it proves to be infectious among the friends that she makes and the viewers at home. And if you remember how hard it was to get a club in high school off the ground or for that club to make the simplest decision, Courtney's ability to resurrect the Justice Society of America with a handful of out cast teens is a superpower in its own right. Four, Women of the Expanse. Each of the space opera's principal female leads kicks major ass in her own way. Naomi Nagata, an equal partner in ownership and operation of the Rosinante and brilliant engineer with a heart of gold. Christian Avasarala, the foul-mouthed planet leader who mops the floor with condescending politicians. Bobby Draper, the former Mars Marine Corps gunnery sergeant who now uses her very particular set of skills to help save the solar system. And last but not least, Kamina Drummer, the belter captain and former security chief who later makes a living as a space pirate. I know that look on your face. Don't do this. Naomi. Please. I can fix this with Marco. You, you, you don't have to. You shouldn't have followed me. Hannah. She's a teenage assassin with major daddy issues. When they cooked up Hannah in the lab, they sort of broke the mold. In this Amazon Prime video adaptation of the feature film, we come to find out that Hannah isn't alone. She was part of a legion of designer killers raised from birth. But with special training from her father, however, she may be the deadliest. Get me out of here! They sent me out!
Number two, Siri and Yennefer the Witcher. Amidst the magical creatures of the Witcher, Siri and Yennefer reign. In season one, young Siri was just learning about her deadly powers, while Yennefer journeyed from physically disabled farm girl to one of the realm's most powerful sorceresses. Take her instead. As a sacrifice. And before we reveal number one, here are some honorable mentions. The next Shand, The Book of Boba Fett. The Mandalorian brought three amazing women into its second season. Although we met Fennec Shand in the first season, we really only saw her brilliance in a battle and her sense of honor recently. And after watching her take out some Imperials, we definitely want her in our squad. Now, with the Mandalorian spinoff show, The Book of Boba Fett, we can't wait to see what Fennec does this time around. I know that you sit on the throne of your former employer. Jabba ruled with fear. I intend to rule with respect. You were all once captains under Jabba the Hutt. I'm here to make a proposal that's mutually beneficial. Why speak of conflict when cooperation can make us all rich? What prevents us all from killing you and taking what we want? If he had spoken such insolence to Jabba, he'd have fed you to his menagerie. Please, speak freely. Claire Randall, Outlander. Time-traveling wife Claire not only has to contend with the mind-blowing fact that she slipped 200 years through time from the 1940s to the relatively barbaric 1740s, but also that her husband's doppelganger in that time is a twisted rapist. But Claire endures and endures and endures through violent attacks and the tragic deaths of loved ones. Nevertheless, she persisted. I see we're all ready to go. Marta, please try not to insult too many people tonight. Are you... mad, woman? I can see every inch of you, right down to your third rib. No, you can't. Christ, I can see right into your navel. So you don't mean to go out in public like this? I most certainly do. I'll have you know I helped design this dress. <laughs> Christ. So it's an act. First your honey pot, no less. Uh, I'll wait in the carriage. No, you won't. <clears throat> I suppose it'll have to do. Could cover up a bit. Well, I already thought of that. 
And finally, number one, Emily Dickinson Dickinson. Emily Dickinson was more than a recluse who kept her poetry mostly hidden from the world during her lifetime. And in Haley Steinfeld's embodiment of her in the eponymous Apple TV Plus series, one gets to see a modern take on what the writer's life was like. In this show, there's twerking, romance with her sister-in-law, carriage rides with death, and a natural inclination to fight her mother's expectations that she marry a proper young man. When I married Austin and we became sisters, the only bond between us was your words. You started writing so much and I was the only one who ever saw any of it. I got overwhelmed. So I thought if I pushed you a little, if you pushed me away, I'd become someone else's problem. Well, guess what? I'm not your problem anymore, Sue. You can go back to your perfect parlor with your fancy dresses and be as exquisitely empty as you like because I will never make you feel anything again. And without me... What? Without me? I don't think you know how to have feelings. Okay. Shut the door on your way out. Well, friends, that about does it for us. Be sure to stay tuned to the Rotten Tomatoes channel for more of the entertainment content that you love. And until next time, I'm your host, Naz Perez, and we'll see you back here for more top tens on the Rotten Tomatoes countdown.